Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to another video, SG Diagnosis here. Today we're at this 2012 Citroen C5, it's a uh, customer complaint is power steering is heavy and there's also a fault up in the, dust, the cluster for power steering. Um, so we're just going to diagnose this now um, using a few tools there. Um, so we'll just show you exactly the message that comes up when it starts. So it's a power steering faulty message, and a service and stoplight, and the steering is heavy. So that's the customer complaint verified. So we've the GOS flash on it just to keep it up to battery voltage. And we're connected in here then with the the Zeus's VCI as one says. And it's in it's in the center console box is where the diagnostic connector is located in this. This vehicle has had an amount of work to try and fix this issue, including a second hand cloned BSI unit fitted to it. I think initially that this vehicle was actually a crank or no crank or just dash lights on the dash and but it's turned into starting again for some reason. So code scan is nearly complete. Not too many codes to go by at the moment. Doesn't mean there's no fault there though. So no, we have one code in the electric power steering. We have electro pump assembly motor current fault internal short circuit. So um with that code we We'd probably just check our powers grounds to this pump assembly motor module, all in one unit. Um, and we, if they are okay, then we might turn and have a look at our CAN signals. Just to see if we are losing our CAN high or CAN low, if there's a short in them CAN, can gives CAN highs and CAN lows. Um, so yeah, I think that's where our next step is, pull away our wearing diagram. So we'll just try, we'll just see is our wearing diagram available on the Zeus for this particular vehicle. We can have a look, just see, make sure there's no known TSBs for it or anything. It's only four TSBs. And there are any smart cases for it. Nothing to do with steering. So we know we're just going to electric power steering. I think it's the one without variable assisted power steering. Might be wrong, but I'll just go into that one for now. So we have variable control valve, assisted power steering control valve, control unit. That's not what I was looking for. I must have clicked the wrong one. So it's right and drive without variable power assistance steering, assist steering, and we're just got to go to power steering control unit. So we could follow the diagnosis thing, but we just got to we know ourselves. Well, I know. Um, what are we looking for? So we've a power in a A3, which is going to be a small wire because I've already looked at this power steering control unit and there is two wires, one with two wires in it, another with three wires which consists of CAN wires as well as a battery supply 
So our A3 is going to be our smaller of our two connectors. Our B1 and B2 linears are going to be our main big big feeds to the motor of this power steering control unit. Uh, there's no really pictures, I don't think. It just gives you a picture of the module. Um, so yeah, we're just going to check our powers and grounds on with this module. And if they are okay, then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so this is our power steering control unit. It lives behind the driver's side headlight below it, and it's inside the wing liner. Um, so we already know we have two, one big connector with two power, with one power on the ground. And we have another power then on the smaller connector. Um, not sure if it's this black or yellow wire going into this, the main connector for the pump motor. And then I'm not sure also the wires in the smaller connector which is located inside beside it. Um, we have a green so we have a green green, white and brown. Obviously Peugeot's and Citroen's French being French they don't go by um colour what colour codes, which is a bit of a pain when you're searching for wires in these, but for now we're we're not we're not really worried on numbers and wires. We're obviously going to know that two of them are going to be a can, one is going to be a power, and then there's two a ground, another ground, and a power here outside. Our main feed into the pump the motor. Um, our black wire, our black wire there where the yellow piece and probe is, is our power, and our yellow is our ground. So we're just going to touch that lightly. As you can see, we have a power to the motor side of it. Um, so we're just going to get another Pearson probe now and we will <coughs> check our ground. So ground on our thing. We have a good ground also. Let me see, we have a ground, let me turn that off for a second. So, good ground, good power to our motor side. Our next step now is to check our power at this smaller connector inside there. See there where the two little green and the brown or green and white wire are, you know they're not colours so or this but yeah so we've got a back pierced in there now. I'm not sure which wire is which but we'll just back pierce if we can't do any damage in it. So we'll just back pierce in the first one. This lays on ground up here, ground bolt. Nothing in that, but I heard that uh, it's a can wire because I heard the car beeping inside. So I've got the next wire. Is there nothing that's on so I can't we'll go to the last green wire. Last wire which was a green. We don't pour that either. I'll just remove the connector for a second there. I'll just remove the connector, it makes life easier, it doesn't need to be plugged in really, at the moment. As you can see, obviously our back pin wasn't in properly, but we have a power rod so that, and that's on pin. It's the brown wire there. So it's that wire. 
the wrong way. Is our 12 volt feed? So our green and white, can high and can low. Right, so we're back pinning the multi plug on the power saying control unit, the smaller two connectors, and it looks like it's actually okay. Um, but this is with it disconnected, so we've got a mirror image of each other. I'll just zoom in a bit just to see, so we can drop this and bring this up. So they're mirroring each other, can signals. So that signal looks 100% perfect. So next now we're just going to plug this module in um, and see if we see any differences in the signal. Uh, I presume we're going to see something different because like with the fault that's on it, if we have a pause and ground module, it has to be a communication problem. So it's either module or wiring, possibly. So. We are back probed again, um, but this time the connector is plugged into the module. So let's plug back on. I'm back in and hold steady. We can clearly see that we don't have a mirror image anymore. Um, closer. So our nice clean mirror image has disappeared. Very poor can, high and can low. Um, I presume it's a short internalist module that is causing the problem. So what we'll do again, we'll run it again. We'll disconnect the module plug now just to prove that it is indeed a module that is faulty. So you watch your cans come back to normal. Back to normal and they're and mirror, mirroring each other. Can I can know. So this one needs a module. Right, so we have this power steering control unit, the second end unit fitted. Um, our connectors are back up, we're just gotta do a quick can trace. So our module is plugged in, our cans high and can lower connected to our connector. The scope is running. And as you can see, we have a perfect hand signals again. So, back in this vehicle, we're yet to see the steering fault, and the steering is nice and light. Um, we've just got to give this vehicle a drive for, for a night or two, make sure that everything is checking out okay. Uh, it looks to be fine though. We'll just show us a quick trace in the, the scope we zoomed in. So as you can see, we've got a nice clean mirror image, can high and can low. So I can confirm this vehicle is now fixed.